Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is so good. I also want to ask you to pray for me. Um, uh, I was just going to say many times as pastors, I'm, I, I do ask you for a lot of things and pray for a lot of things. Uh, I leave today and uh, I'm flying to Dodoma, Africa, and uh, I am going to be uh, preaching a five-day pastors and leadership conference in Tanzania. They're wanting to plant thousands of churches in the next 10 years. And uh, pray for me because it's a 30-hour flight. And <laughs> uh, secondly, I'm preaching 11 times in five days. And so uh, uh, we'll see how that goes, right? <laughs> but uh, and pray for Heidi as she stays here and holds the fort down. But uh, I'm praying for a mighty... This is a kingdom thing. This is not a Shane Wilson thing. This is a kingdom thing. And I'm praying that this week would inspire uh, literally thousands of pastors to plant churches. They're, they're believing God for a church in walking distance of every Tanzanian. And so uh, we've been a huge, praise the Lord. If you don't know, CLA has had a significant footprint in the Tanzanian Assemblies of God for the last 15 years through uh, our missions trips, through World Serve, John Bongiorno. And, uh, and so we, we've had an opportunity to, to help and, and, and push these efforts forward. And so I consider it a great privilege to be able to, uh, to speak to these pastors this week. So pray, if you think about it, uh, that God would do something really, really supernatural in their life. Well, we're thrilled to, uh, to, uh, to preach the second uh, message in this series that I entitled Kingdom Benefits. And I shared with you last week, and I, I wanna just reaffirm this to you, that as a follower of Jesus Christ, you are the rightful recipient of kingdom benefits, amen? That's not some prosperity preaching. That's not some prosperity message. This is the Bible. This is gospel. When you come to know Jesus Christ, you become the recipient of benefits of being a part of the kingdom of God. You, you, you step into this. You, you become an heir, right? An heir with Christ. Uh, uh, it, it's an incredible relationship. It's incredible benefits that we have uh, as we serve Jesus Christ. And so we're, we're walking through those. Jesus didn't come to set up a religion. He came to establish a kingdom. A kingdom that you and I are a part of. And again, as, as part of his kingdom, we have been given certain benefits. And we're focusing on Psalm 103. I, I shared with you last week, Psalm 103 is a powerhouse of praise and worship to God. Its entire focus is on worshiping and praising the Lord, uh, remembering what God has done and, and praising him for his goodness and his benefits. All 22 verses of Psalm 103 are worship. There's no mention of enemies or threats like you see in so many other Psalms. There's no lamenting, there's no grieving, there's no complaints, praise the Lord, right? Which Psalms is full of. This is, this is purely and solely worship to God. There's not even a single request in Psalm 103. It's all about God. It's all about lifting up his name and worshiping him. 22 verses that focus on worshiping God for his goodness, for his grace, for his mercy, for his love, and for his benefits. So powerful. And last week, I, I focused specifically on verse one and two, on the command, not a suggestion, but the command to praise the Lord and to not forget his kindness to not forget his goodness and his benefits. David is reminding us in this psalm to never forget God's love and never forget his mercy and never forget his long suffering. Never forget the benefits that we're given in Jesus Christ. And I trust you're memorizing this psalm. I shared with you last week, we're gonna read it together every week throughout the fall. And hopefully toward the end of this uh, series, I'm not gonna put it up on the screen, right? And we're just gonna read it together. So I had, I've already received emails this week. Pastor, I've, I've almost got it. I, I've almost memorized it. So I encourage you, uh, let's hide the word of the Lord in our heart together, right? I put the insert in again. I think it was in your bulletin again today. So if you wanna stand with me, you can either take your insert or take your Bibles, turn to Psalm 103. And let's read it together congregationally. Let's start in verse one. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. 
The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it's gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenants and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wow, that's the word of God encouraging us to do the very thing that, that, that we just did. We just spent 30 or 40 minutes worshiping and praising the Lord. Lord Jesus, we lift your name today and we, and we, uh, we wanna be obedient to this command to praise your name, no matter what we're walking through, no matter how we feel, no matter where we're going, no matter what we're doing, whether it's out loud or in our heart, we lift your name up, we praise your holy name. From the depths of our soul, we praise you. We thank you for your benefits, God, that the, the, the natural things that, that, that are ours, that, that are given to us as we walk in relationship with you. I pray that your word would just illuminate and open our hearts up today to the, the benefits that you've given us and how much you love us and how much you care for us and how kind you are to us. Lord, let us never forget those great benefits. We love and praise you. Have me behind your cross. I just want to speak your words today in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. 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 You may be seated. I shared with you earlier, I say this often, but this is probably one of my favorite Psalms. I won't say my favorite book of the Bible, right? Favorite chapter. It's, it's an incredible call, a credible command to us to, to praise and worship the Lord, to not forget his goodness. Do you know that elephants have incredible memories? They actually never forget certain moments and events throughout their entire lifespan. And they, they live on average 50 to 60 years. Elephants, interestingly, never forget their place of birth, the exact location of their birth. No matter how long they live, no matter how, how, many, how many miles they've traveled throughout their life, no matter how many places they've gone, they never forget the place, the exact spot that they were born. Fascinating to me that their memory is so strong that an elephant actually makes a pilgrimage back to their birthplace when they're about to die. They, they end or they begin and end their life in the same place. Fascinating. It's sad and fascinating, right? It's why the circus loves the elephants so much because they can, they can remember certain commands uh, from their trainers. They're, they're incredibly uh, smart and, and their memories are unbelievable. Think about your memory. Now, maybe some of us don't have the memory of an elephant, right? I don't know. <laughs> But think about the things in your life that you remember. I, I, I can remember uh, many events in my life. Some are memorable, right? They, they've made a, a, a mark on my life in a good way. And then there are also those memories that we all grapple with of things that brought maybe pain or harm to our life. And, and, and they are, they're etched in our memory. Now, surprisingly, when it comes to the Lord, our memories are often short. When it comes to the things of God, look in the Old Testament. That's a prime example, right? 
I mean, many times just forgetting the goodness of the Lord. And, and it's no different today in our life. Many times when it, when it comes to the things of God, our memories are often short. Things are going great in life. We're, we're happy. We're praising the Lord, right? Uh, I mean, we're just, we're, we're thrilled when, and we talk about the goodness of the Lord, right? And then something happens seemingly out of nowhere. And sometimes the first thing out of our mouth is, God, why have you forsaken me, Right? I mean, just walked out of a great season of our life where we felt the blessing and the hand of God and we, we would even say his presence feels so near to me. And then the moment something hits in our life that, that causes tension or causes some stress or some anxiety, God, where are you? God, why have you forsaken me? God, why are you allowing me to go through this? We quickly forget the goodness of the Lord. We quickly forget his Benefits. We quickly forget his kindness. That's precisely why David is calling us in this psalm in verse 1 and 2 to not only remember, but to never forget the goodness of the Lord. And I just challenge you today, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're walking through, pull back from your file all the goodness and the faithfulness of the Lord in your life. It'll carry you through those moments of of challenge and those moments and those seasons of darkness. That's what David is saying. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Don't forget his kindness. Don't forget his goodness. Don't don't, Don't forget his love and his patience, amen? His patience with you. David is saying, remember... And don't forget. It's two different things. Remember, call upon those things. I I, I often do that in my life. I shared with you last week in my my journal. I just read and and, and I, I am reminded of the goodness of the Lord in my life. So it's remember and and don't forget. Never forget the benefits of the Lord. Don't forget the kindness and the love. And in verse 3. David begins to list the incredible kingdom benefits that are ours, that are available to us through Christ Jesus. And at the top of the list, we find our greatest need. Go to verse three. At the top of the list, so he spends verse one and two commanding us, imploring us to praise the Lord, reminding us don't don't ever forget, remember and don't forget, don't ever forget the goodness of God And then he starts this incredible list of benefits in verse three. And at the top of the list, we find our greatest need. The single greatest need for all of humanity is the forgiveness of our sins. He says, praise the Lord, my soul. Don't forget his benefits. And he lists the first one, the most important one, who forgives all our sins. What's the one thing that you need above anything else in your life? Forgiveness. Don't say a new car, <laughs> right? You may want one, but you don't need it that bad, right? You need something deeper and more important than anything else, more important than a car and a house and, and, and friendship and all these things that we so, so deeply desire in our life. You need forgiveness. It's the single most important thing in your life. Because you've committed a, a, a sin, you, you, you've, 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 you've caused a, a debt that needs to be paid, and, and you can't pay it. Only Jesus Christ can pay your sin debt. Only Jesus can, can wipe away and pardon the sin in your life. So the most important thing that we need in our life, David lists as the number one benefit that we have in God, he forgives all our sins. We have to remember that we were sinners, not so that we can have guilt and condemnation in our life, but so that we can remember the goodness and the benefit of God forgiving us from those sins. We were sinners, we've sinned, we are guilty, we we have a penalty of sin on us, and because of Jesus Christ, we've been forgiven. This message today is to remind you. This message is to do exactly what David tells us to do in verse two, to not forget the benefits of the Lord. Today's message is to remind you, to remind me of the incredible love and mercy and grace and benefit that we have in Christ through the forgiveness of our sin. We're forgiven and David implores us, don't forget how amazing the forgiveness of the Lord is. 
19 kingdom benefits. Now you can probably follow some other uh, preachers or you can study and some say 17 benefits and some list more. I, I, I see 19 benefits that are packed in, in 22 verses in Psalm 103. And he starts, the psalmist declares to us that the most important, the number one, is the forgiveness of our sin. And I wanna teach on forgiveness for just a few moments this morning. I encourage you to take some notes, write some thoughts down. David is quick to remind us of the extent of God's forgiveness. Praise the Lord, my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives? All. all. <laughs> Say it with me. Who forgives all your sins? Make it personal today. Who forgives all my sins? I don't know about you, but I thank God for that three-letter word, all today, right? Because I know what I've done in my life. I know what I deserve in my life. I know where I should be today in my life. And thank God that he didn't wipe just a few things away from me. He didn't pardon me from just a few things that I've done. He forgave everything when I came to him and I asked him to cleanse my life and to move into my heart and allow his blood to cover me. Whoo, man, that should make us have church this morning, right? That's what I want to remind you of today is that you've been forgiven. If you are in Jesus Christ today, you've been forgiven from all of your sins. The, the entire penalty, your sin debt has been paid. Not just when I was about seven years old and I took the cookies out of my nanny's cookie jar and I blamed it on my cousin, right? <laughs> Evil child I was, right? <laughs> He didn't just forgive me from that lie, right? He covered it all. He pardoned it all. His blood has washed me clean from all my sins. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All of my sins have been washed away. And that thought is echoed all throughout the New Testament. I'm excited today. When I think about the forgiveness and the goodness of the Lord, it moves me in my heart. It does something to me. And I've been, a, I've been following Jesus for a long time in my life. And we should never get so comfortable in our relationship with the Lord that we forget how lost we were and how found we are now, right? How, how our sin deserved punishment, our sin deserved a, a, a penalty, a, a debt to be paid, that, that there was no way that we could be pay it, pay it. And Jesus, in his love and his blood and his kindness and his grace and his mercy, he came and he washed me. He paid a debt that I couldn't pay. And that's why David says, don't forget the goodness of the Lord. Don't forget the benefits that you have in Christ. It's echoed all throughout the New Testament. Go to 1 John, you see it on the screen. 1 John chapter one. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from how many of our sins? All sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Oh, church, he's, he's forgiven you. If you're in Christ today, he's forgiven you. He, he's forgiven me. He's forgiven anyone who calls upon his name. And listen, he's not only forgiven all my sins. Here's where it gets really good. The Bible says he's forgotten my sins. Oh, you think forgiven is being good, right? right? You think forgiven is good stuff. The Bible spends a lot of time in the New Testament telling us how, how God has not only forgiven, but forgotten our sin. Look at what the Lord says in Hebrews chapter eight. And I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. Now, does that mean that God has a bad memory? No, right? He's God, he's, he's powerful, he's all knowing. What it means, this is so, somebody lock into this today. What it means is that in his love and in his grace and in his mercy, he chooses to not recall the penalty of my sin. 
He chooses, he, he makes a divine choice as he forgives me from my sin. If you move down in Psalm 103, the Bible says he casts it as far as the east is from the west. And he chooses to not hold my sin against me any longer. The penalty has been removed. Remember verse 10 and 12. We've been memorizing it. He does not treat us as our sin deserves. What does our sin deserve? It deserves punishment. Or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the love for those who fear him. Here we go. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions. Man, that ought to get somebody all excited today. (laughs) I'm reminding you of something you know. I'm reminding you today that God has given you the benefit of forgiveness. And David says, praise the Lord and don't forget about his goodness. Don't forget about his forgiveness. God has forgiven and forgotten your sins. He chooses to not remember or to not recall those things that have been paid for by his precious blood. Listen, Psalms says he forgives me and Isaiah says he forgets about them. I, even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. And because he has forgiven me, here's where it gets good, right? This is where it puts the responsibility on us. Because he has forgiven me, what do I do? I go to verse two, I praise the Lord. What do I do? I praise him. I don't allow myself to, I remember and I don't forget the goodness of the Lord. And because of his forgiveness and because of his grace and because of his love and because of his mercy, I praise him from the depths of my soul. And that's why I talk so much about music style and these kind of things. It doesn't matter what song you're singing. It doesn't matter what, what uh, atmosphere you're in. I can praise him. I have been in ball games before where I've just praised. I may not be saying it out loud, but I'm praising the Lord in my heart. I'm driving in my car and I'm lifting up the name of Jesus. I'm standing in line at the grocery store and I'm worshiping and praising the Lord from the depths of my soul. I'm praising him because he's forgiven and he's forgotten my sin. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all my sins. Listen, I don't know what you've done. I don't know how many times you've done it. I don't know who you've done it with. But if you've put it under the blood of Jesus Christ, I want you to know today you're not only clean, you've not only been forgiven, it's been tossed aside, it's been trampled under the feet of Jesus Christ, and you need to live victorious in Christ today. Many of you are dragging this stuff around from your past 20, 30, 40 years ago. Let it go. He's not only forgiven you, he's cast your sin aside and he never recalls it again. Listen, that's salvation. That's the first of these benefits, the first of God's gift to us. Forgiveness is the first of his incredible kingdom benefits. It's where it all starts. That's the gospel. Forgiveness of sin, it's, it's the gospel. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. That through the sacrifice of Christ, through his shed blood, your sins are forgiven. Listen, you'll hear things today preached to everything. It's about a happy life and it's about just putting everything, getting all, everything just right in your life. So, you know, if you're happy, then you can, you can accomplish all these things. Listen, it's about being forgiven. All these other things follow. All of these other things come as an after uh, effect of of, of being, uh, yeah, you're gonna live happy. Yeah, you're gonna have joy. Yeah, you're gonna be content. Yeah, you're gonna fulfill God's purpose and destiny in your life. But it starts with forgiveness. It starts with surrendering and yielding your life to Jesus Christ. It's the good news of Christ. It's the same good news John the Baptist preached about. Go to Mark chapter one. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written, look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. He'll prepare the way. And you know, that was, that was John the Baptist's role. He was the, the forerunner. He was the one that, 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 that prepared the way for Jesus. They said, are you the Messiah? He said, I'm not even worthy to bend over and untie his shoes. 
He was the messenger. He's a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He's in the wilderness. Here we go. And preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. I know there's a lot of theology in today's culture that says in the end, you know, it's all gonna work out, right? Everybody's just gonna, we're all gonna end up in some place together, right? <laughs> Listen, if you want to spend eternity with Jesus, if you, God, if you want your, your sins to be forgiven, you have to receive him into your life. I'm giving you the basic good news message of Jesus Christ. That you, you, had, a, you had a sin debt that you couldn't pay. And God, in his, in his divine love and mercy for you, sent his son who stepped over the balcony of heaven and came to earth and put on flesh to pay a debt that you could not pay. And he went to a cross and he died. He gave his life for you. Three days later, the stone rolled away and he, he uh, arose triumphant from the grave. He ascended back to heaven. He's, he's with the Father, interceding and praying for you, right? Waiting for the time when he comes for his church. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. So in the end, here's how you have life, that you say, Jesus, I, I need you in my heart. I need you to forgive me from my sins. I surrender my life to you. It's not about some mind trick. It's not about some, some mind game. It's not about mind over matter. It's not about naming it and claiming it. It's about laying your life down on the altar and saying, Jesus, I'm lost without you. I need you to come into my life and forgive me from my sins. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what John the Baptist came to preach. That's what David is talking about in Psalm 103. You won't hear preachers say this much today in 2019, but because your sins are forgiven, that means you will escape hell and you will spend an eternity in heaven around the throne, praising and worshiping him forever and ever and ever. That's why we praise him. And that's why David said, don't forget the goodness of the Lord. He forgives all of our sins. It starts with our hearts being pure and clean before the Lord. That's why we never forget his goodness and his benefits. Now, this is important. Don't, don't miss this. Everything I've preached so far, don't miss this. Don't think for a moment that simply because God is willing to forgive all our sins, and he is, don't think for a moment that forgiveness or salvation comes without a price. Here's what I mean by that. Our sins, all of them, will be forgiven. Here's the condition. You see, there's a condition. Here's the condition. The condition is, I just said it, that you submit your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You can't do it your way and his way. And my, my guess is that many of us in this room have tried that and we failed miserably, right? I know many of your stories, you know mine. We, we, we tried that and we failed miserably. The condition is that we give and surrender our heart to him. The condition is that we submit our life to him. And don't miss this, that we are obedient to what he says. Romans says it this way. Thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we've given you. Hebrews says it this way in five, chapter five. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as the perfect high priest and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who what? Amen. Obey him. See, so yeah, here's the condition to salvation. You surrender your life. Here's the condition to forgiveness. You surrender your life to Christ. We give an opportunity almost every Sunday in almost every venue that happens through the week for people to come to find and know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to experience the forgiveness that David talks about in Psalm 103. This is so important. Forgiveness is yielding to God's plan of salvation. What's God's plan of salvation? It's us submitting, us surrendering, us repenting, us being obedient and asking him, for forgiveness. I just feel like I have to say this. I don't know that, that, I, that I, we would think we have to say this in 2019, but I think it's important because I want you to know the truth. Listen, coming to church does not make you a Christ follower. Serving does not make you a Christ follower. 
And you can serve a lot. You can go on missions trips. You can, you can be here 52 weeks a year. You can, you can give. You can do all of these things. Listen, nothing makes you a Christ follower until you submit your life, surrender your life, become uh, 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 covered with the blood of Jesus Christ that was paid for you and pardons and forgives your sins. Coming to church, checking a box, does not make you obedient to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter two says it this way. Peter replies, here we go. This is the gospel. Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. That's what this, listen, everything we do in this church on this hill is about that. Why do we have discover classes? Why do we want you to grow in your relationship with Christ and discover your gifts so that you can do this, so that you can tell other people, so that you can go into the highways of Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, uttermost parts of the world, so that you can go and say what Peter said, repent of your sins and turn to God. That's what it's all about. Acts 22 says, what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized. Have your sins washed away by calling on the name of the Lord. You'll never be good enough. You'll never be spiritual enough. You'll never earn your forgiveness or your salvation. It's a gift. It was paid for you. What do you have to do? You have to receive it. And you have to say, yes, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I submit to your lordship. I want to be obedient to your word. I want to walk in your I want to walk in your ways. I want to follow you. Isn't that what being a disciple of Jesus is all about, a follower? I want to live like you live, Jesus. And unfortunately today, too many Christians want the best of both worlds. And I think Jesus is calling us in 2019, if we're going to be serious about him, you're going to follow me or not. And if you are, what does that mean? That means we turn from our sin. We don't just get grace and say, oh, now I can do anything I want, right? Woo, I'm covered, I'm clean. I got some, I got some fire insurance, I'm, good, I'm in good shape, right? Peter says, repent and turn to God. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Spirit. First Corinthians chapter six says, for God bought you with a high price. It's free, it's here, it's now, it's for you today. Today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. Romans 3, a scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. What does that mean? You can't do this on your own. It's about submitting. It's about surrendering. It's about yielding. It's about accepting the love and the forgiveness of the Lord. Jesus paid your sin debt. You have to call upon you, him. You have to respond to him. I love what Micah chapter seven says. Where is another God like you who pardons the guilt of the remnant, overlooking the sins of his special people? You will not stay angry with your people forever because you delight in showing unfailing love. Don't, don't miss verse 19. Once again, you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. You will show us your faithfulness and unfailing love as you've promised to your ancestors, Abraham and Jacob long ago. What a picture. Think about God taking your sins, trampling them under his feet and throwing them into the depths of the ocean. Everything you've done. If you're in Christ today, listen, everything you've done under his feet. Some of you need to get a picture of this because the enemy's been beating you up for 20 or 30 years from something you've done, right? If you put it under the book, listen, you may still be walking out some consequences of it. I understand that. But if you've put it under the blood, the guilt and the condemnation of your sin, the enemy's just dragging it in front of you every day. It's under his feet. It's under his feet. It's been thrown into the depths of the ocean. Every sin under his feet thrown into the ocean. Every time Satan tries to remind you of that thing you did, remember, it's under his feet. It's under the blood of Jesus Christ. 
I know many of you, you feel like God begins to work in your life and then you begin to to sense God's hand and his anointing in your life. I've seen this over and over. And then the enemy starts to whisper in your ear. Yes, I know it. I know what that whisper sounds like, right? That, That whisper of guilt and that whisper of condemnation. I know the feeling of God can never use me because of. I'll never be anything in the kingdom because of. God will never use me in ministry because of. He starts whispering, remember what you did. Remember what happened long ago. God can never use you. Listen, I'm going to tell somebody came to church today to hear this. Your past is under his feet this morning in Jesus name. The guilt and the condemnation of your sin. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus, for the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary that gave us forgiveness of sin so that it's under his feet. He's forgiven all of our sins. He tramples them under his feet and he throws them in the depths of the ocean. What a picture. You need to get that mental picture in your heart and your mind today. Every time he starts saying, God can never, you can never, you can't. Remember verse 19, you will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. Think of your sin this way. Think of it like trash. He tramples it and he discards it. When you surrender, when you're obedient, when you yield, when you submit to him, he forgives them, he tramples them, he throws them to the depths of the ocean. And again, some of you just need to get a picture of that, of Jesus just just trampling your sin because of the blood that he shed for you. Yes, you made some mistakes. And again, many of you are walking out and you may walk out for a, a significant period of time in your life, some of the consequences. But listen, in Christ, you're free, you're clean, and you're forgiven today. And I know I've I've, I've seen many consequences of of some bad decisions and some mistakes and some sin that people have committed. I get that. But in walking out those consequences, you can know that you know that you know that you know that you're clean and you're free and you're forgiven. There's no greater feeling in the world. David says, praise the Lord. Don't forget his benefits. He forgives all our sins. He forgives all of our sins. The prophet Jeremiah puts it this way, and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, you should know the Lord, for everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already, says the Lord, and I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. He forgives them all. Notice the word forgives, and this is important, and I close with this. Notice the word forgives, it's a present tense word. It means that he's not only forgiven me from the sins of my past, the sins of yesterday, but it means that he continually forgives me as I go to him and I repent and I submit to him and, 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 and the Holy Spirit convicts of those things that we do that aren't pleasing and honoring to the Lord. And what do we do? We don't disregard them. We, we say, yes, Lord, please forgive me. I want that out of my life. I don't know about you, but, but it's a natural common thing for me to do almost on a daily basis. Lord, cleanse my heart and my life. Forgive me from all my, you said, pastor, you pray that every day almost of my life, I pray that. Create in me a clean heart, oh Lord. I pray it every day. God, come on. Oh Lord, my attitude, thoughts, uh, responses, things. I want everything in my life to honor and glorify Jesus. and, And I want everything out of my life that doesn't bring honor and glory to his name. So I want to make sure every day that my life is pure before the Lord. So yes, I pray prayers of repentance constantly. And so this is a present tense word. He's forgiven me from everything. He continues to forgive me as long as I submit and repent to him. He lovingly and graciously forgives me. And he takes my sin and he casts all them into the sea of forgetfulness. I'm going to call the musicians to come back. I'm going to wrap up and we'll transition to communion in just a moment. I love what Corey Ten Boom once said. She said, when he, when God forgives, he forgets. He buries our sins in the sea and puts a sign on the shore that says no fishing allowed. (laughs) Some of you need to stop fishing. 
and start living. He paid a high price for you. Don't insult him by carrying your stuff around. Don't insult the cross by having him forgive you and forget you, for, for, forget what you've done and you still drag it around every day of your life. And I know many of you, you sat in my office, I've, I've prayed with you at the altar in different moments and you say, Pastor, I just, I can't get over it. I can't get over that thing I've done. I can't get over that. That moment in my life, I made that, that terrible decision. I did this or I did that. And the enemy has just gotten you tied up and paralyzed. And yeah, you're going to heaven because you love Jesus, but you're not having a good journey along the way. I'm telling you, stop fishing and start living. It's done. It's over. It, it's been dealt with. Jesus has forgiven you. It's, he's trampled it under his feet. He's, he's cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. Yes. He's forgiven all of your sin. Let Jesus just come in today and touch your life. Oh, this has been my prayer all week. Stop going back day to day, reliving. Stop, stop playing the tape over and over and over. Stop allowing the enemy to destroy your life with the memories of things that God has long forgiven and forgotten. It's interesting to me. I, I, this, this light bulb just, just came on as I was preparing this message. We're called to remember his benefits while he chooses to forget our sin. We're called to remember and never forget. He, he does the opposite. He chooses to let him go and forgive, her, forgive us from all of our sins and remember them no more. David says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Don't forget his goodness. He forgives all of our sins. And he spends the next 20 verses reminding us of the goodness of the Lord. I never want to forget God's goodness. I never want to forget his mercy. I never want to forget his grace. I never want to forget every one of those moments where he did something so specific in my life, but more than anything, I never want to forget his forgiveness. I shouldn't be standing here. None of us should be in this room. Thank him for his blood today and his forgiveness. I'm gonna invite our ushers to come. We wanna prepare, prepare for communion. I don't know that there's a better moment and picture of forgiveness and what we've been talking about than, than communion. It, it does exactly what David tells us to do in Psalm 103. It brings back to our memory. It recalibrates us to the goodness of the Lord. If you're visiting with us, we practice open communion at CLA. What that means is you don't have to be a member of our church to participate, but you do need to be in the family of God. What that means is you need to be a Christ follower. Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your life? And the Bible also tells us that we should take time to examine ourselves before we partake of communion. And we're gonna do that as the ushers are ready, they can begin to serve you. Pastor Christian's just gonna lead us in a song and, and, and I don't want you to even really necessarily focus on singing. I want you to just open your heart and allow the, the Holy Spirit to shine the spotlight and reveal to us anything in our life that we need to resolve and deal with. I'm gonna pray and then Pastor Christian lead us. Lord Jesus, we love you today. I'm so thankful for your forgiveness, Lord. And I'm so thankful that you didn't forgive just a few things that I've done. You forgave all my sins. And I'm reminded today of your great love and your mercy and your grace. And Lord, we go to your table today with, with hearts of, hearts that are reflecting and hearts that are open and so appreciative and we probably can't even express in words today. And we love you and we thank you today. In Jesus' name. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 
that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior. says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's hold the bread in our hand and let's remember exactly what David implores us to do. Don't forget. Remember. And so we remember, Lord Jesus, your great sacrifice. We've been talking about it today. We remember your forgiveness, that, that, that your forgiveness covers everything in our life, not just a few things. And we rejoice in the fact today that we're forgiven and we're free and we're clean when we are in relationship with you. And so, Lord, we thank you. We not only remember, but we thank you for your great love and sacrifice to us. Help us never forget. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake the bread together.